Then the third organ is the Economic and Social Council. The Economic and Social Council. This council has 27 members. Uh, here in the textbook it is written there 27 members. But now presently 54 members are there. How many members? 54 members are there. It seeks to build a world of greater prosperity, stability and justice. So the economic and the social council build a world, world of greater prosperity. Prosperity means good fortune. Prosperity means good fortune. The state of being prosperous. The state of being prosperous. That is known as prosperity. The state of being prosperous. And then stability. The state of being stable. Stability means the state of being stable and justice and justice. So the economic and social council build a world of greater prosperity, stability and justice. It also works to improve the living conditions of the people of all over the world. The economic and social council works to improve the living conditions of the people. Improve the living conditions of the people all over the world. It works with various agencies to bring about coordination and to protect human rights. The main duty is to uh, the main duty of the economic and social council is coordinate and protect human rights. Through various agencies, it to coordinate and protect human rights. So the third organ of the UNO is, is the Economic and Social Council. Presently, 54 members are there. And it built a world of greater prosperity, stability and justice. And it also works to improve the living conditions of the people of all over the world. And it works with various agencies to bring about coordination and to protect human rights. The fourth organ of the UNO is the Trusteeship Council. The Trusteeship Council. This is a supervisory body. Trusteeship Council is a supervisory body. Supervising something. Supervisory body. It looks after the progress and welfare of the trust territories. What is the meaning of trust territories? The territories which were once under foreign rule. The territories which were once under foreign rule. The territory under now ter the trusteeship of the UN. The territory under the trusteeship of the UN. Presently it is under the trusteeship of the UN. Earlier it is it was it were actually uh, under foreign rule. So the territories which were once under foreign rule, now the territory under the trusteeship of the UN. This council meets twice a year. This council meets twice a year. The council helps these territories to become more developed and self-reliant. The council helps the territories to become more developed and self-reliant. It organizes free and fair elections in the trust territories. It organizes free and fair elections in the trust territories. So the fourth organ of the UNO is the Trusteeship Council. Trusteeship Council. The fifth organ of the UNO is the International Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice. The purpose of this court is to settle the disputes in a peaceful manner in accordance with the international law. So, accordance with the international law, this court solved the problems, solved the disputes between the nations. Already we know that in our India, some courts are there, district courts, municipal courts, high court, supreme court. Between the states, disputes are happened there, who will solve it? Supreme courts. So, then between the nations, that problems are solved by International Court of Justice. So the, the fifth organ of the UNO is the International Court of Justice. The main aim, the main objective of this court is to settle the disputes in a peaceful manner in accordance with the international law. In, a, in accordance with the international law. This court has the authority to decide and settle disputes among nations. So, disputes among nations solved by International Court of Justice. 
the court has 15 judges how many judges are there in international courts of justice 15 1 5 they, this court has 15 judges 1 5 15 judges they are elected by the general assembly and security council for a period of 9 years the judges elected by the judges of the international court of justice elected by the general assembly and security council who elected by the judges of the international court general assembly and the security council for how many periods for 9 years for 9 years the permanent officers of the international court of justice are in the hague in netherlands the permanent officers of the international court of justice are in where hague in netherlands the fifth organ of the uno is the international court of justice the duty, the purpose of the International Court of Justice is to solve the disputes between the nations. How many judges are there? 15 judges are there and it is elected by General Assembly and the Security Council for the period of 9 years. And the office of the International Court of Justice are in Hague in Netherlands. Then, the last organ of the UN, which one is the Secretariat. The Secretariat is the sixth organ of the UN. The Secretariat is the administrative body of the UN. The administrative, administrative means the ruling authority, ruling body. The ruling body of the UN is the Secretariat. That is the sixth organ of the UN. It puts into action the work that the other bodies decide upon. This body actually put into action the other bodies decide upon. What are the things are decided by the other bodies? This body actually that uh, enacted, enacted, enaction is enacted by the secretariat. And uh, it is headed by the secretary general. The head of the secretariat is the secretary general. He helps the nations to settle their dispute peacefully. The secretary general helps, helps the nations to settle their disputes peacefully. The Secretariat has nearly 40,000 employees. For nearly 40,000 employees are there. Most of the employees of the Secretariat work at the UN headquarters in New York. Where is the UN headquarters? It is in the New York. And uh, who is the present Secretary General of the UN? Do you know that? Who is the present Secretary General of the UN? That is Antonia Gotreis. Antonia Gotreis. So these are the important organs of the UN. Which are they? There are six organs are there in UN. They are the General Assembly, the Security Council, the Economic and Social Council, the Trusteeship Council, the International Court of Justice and the Secretariat. Now let us study special agencies of the UN special agencies of the UN and already we studied about the organs of the UN now we are going to learn about the agencies of the UN which are the special agencies of the UN so besides the organs of the UN there are some special agencies which work for human progress and welfare special agencies are work for what work for human progress and welfare they are the following. Which are they? First one, FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization. Food and Agriculture Organization. FAO. Next one, WHO, World Health, Health Organization. WHO, World Health Organization. The next one, UNICEF. 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 United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund UNICEF Then fourth one is UNESCO 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 United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization UNESCO the last one is ILO, International Labour Organization. International Labour Organization. These are the special agencies of the UN. Which are the special agencies of the UN? FAO, WHO, 
UNICEF, UNESCO and ILO. ILO. Let us study one by one. First one, FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization. Food and Agriculture Organization. The aim of the Food and Agriculture Organization is to help nations to increase the food production. Increase the food production and also to distribute supplies of food throughout the world. So, the main aim of the FOFAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, is to increase the food production. Increase the food production and distribute supply of food in a proper way. Distribution of food. Increase the production of the food and distribute the, this food in a proper way. It also aims at fighting diseases that destroy crops. It also aims at fighting diseases that destroy crops. The headquarters of the FAO is at Rome in Italy. Where is the headquarters of FAO? Rome in Italy. Rome in Italy. It is the headquarters of the FAO. The main aim of the FAO is to increase the food production. Same time distribute the food in a proper way. And it is fighting diseases that destroy the crops also. The headquarters of the FAO is in Rome in Italy. Then the second agency of the UN is WHO, World Health Organization. World Health Organization. The World Health Organization aims at fighting diseases and improving both the physical and the mental health conditions of the people all over the world. So the main aim, the main aim of the WHO fighting diseases and improving the health condition not only physical health mental health also physical and mental health of the people it must be improved so the main aim of the who is to fighting diseases and improving both the physical and the mental health conditions of the people all over the world it, it is also special gives special warning against Epidemics. It also gives special warnings against epidemics. What is the meaning of epidemic? Widespread diseases in a community at a particular time. Widespread diseases in a particular community in a particular time. It is known as epidemic. Widespread diseases. The WHO organizes worldwide campaigns against diseases such as malaria and tuberculosis which kill millions of people every year. So it gives a warning against epidemics. The headquarters of WHO is in Geneva, Switzerland. The headquarters of the WHO is in Geneva in Switzerland. That is the second agency of the UN. Then. Which is the third agency of the UN? UNICEF. UNICEF is the third agency of the UN. The United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. What is the full form of UNICEF? United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund is a special agency of the UN which has been set up after the Second World War. It is set up after the Second World War in order to meeting the emergency needs of the children. The aim of the UNICEF is to meet the emergency needs of the children. Meeting the emergency needs of the children. Today it helps millions of mothers and children of the poor countries. This fund is raised with the assistance given by the government and individuals by a way of donations. The fund uh, get given by the government and individuals by the way of donations. UNICEF gets its fund by the way of by the way of donations. It has its headquarters is in New York in USA. New York is in USA. So FAO is headquarters in Rome in Italy. WHO's headquarters in Geneva in Switzerland. UNICEF headquarters is in New York in USA. It is in New York in USA. Then the fourth agency is UNESCO. Fourth agency is UNESCO. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. What is the full form of UNESCO? United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. It has been formed in order to educate millions of people who can't read or write. So 
the main aim of UNESCO is educate people. Educate people who can't read or write. And it also tries to spread knowledge of science and culture. It also spread the knowledge of science and culture. The UNESCO also spread knowledge so that people may live in better condition. So improving the conditions of the people. Improving the conditions of the people. Living standard of the people. That is the main aim of the UNESCO. And to actually educate millions of the people who can't read or write. The UNESCO has its headquarters is in Paris, France. Paris in France. The FAO's headquarters is in Rome in Italy. WHO's is in Geneva, Switzerland. UNICEF, New York in USA. And the UNESCO's headquarters is in Paris. Paris is in France. Then, the last agency of the UN is ILO. ILO. What is the full form of ILO? International Labour Organization. International Labour Organization. This organization was established on 11th April 1919. So, this organization ILO established on 11th April 1919. It is dedicated to the work of improving the living condition of workers throughout the world. The main aim of the ILO is to improve the living conditions of the workers. Improve the living conditions of the employees. It works for full employment and raising the standard of living of workers. To concentrating the living conditions of the workers. ILO makes provisions for child welfare and maternity protection. It seeks adequate nutrition, housing and facility for recreation and cultural developments. ILO has its headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland and its headquarters is in Geneva, Switzerland. So it works for full employment and raising the standard of living of workers. Raising the standard of living of workers and uh, it makes provisions for child welfare. Make provisions for child welfare and uh, maternity protection. Maternity protection. Um, that uh, pregnancy women's uh, protection. It seeks adequate nu nutrition, nutrient food, nutrition, housing and facility for recreation, enjoyment and cultural developments. The headquarters of Geneva is in Switzerland. So these are the important agencies of the UN. These are the important agencies of the UN. Which are they? FAO, WHO, UNICEF, UNESCO and ILO. Next we are going to study India and the United Nations. India and the United Nations. India is one of the founder members of the United Nations. India is one of the founder members of the United Nations. Founder means a person who creates. A person who creates. So India is one of the founder members of the United Nations. From the beginning, India has supported the United Nations and its program. So from the beginning onwards, India supported UNO. Our country has played a, played a vital role in the UN in opposing colonial rule and racial discrimination in different parts of the world. Our country has played a vital role, important role in the UN in opposing, facing or fighting against colonial rule, ruling as colonies. Colonial rule means ruling as col colonies, related to colony, colony rule. And racial discrimination, discrimination based on color, creed and so on. So India played a, a vital role, an important role in the UN in opposing colonial rule and racial discrimination in different parts of the world. India has always put faith in the United Nations as an instrument for building a peaceful world community. India has always put faith in the UN as an instrument for building a peaceful world community. UN actually an instrument for building a peaceful world community. An instrument for building a peaceful world community. India supported it. India has taken a keen interest in the various activities of the UN. India has taken keen interest, very curious interest in the various activities of the UN. It has been a member of the WHO, UNICEF and UNESCO. It, also, it was also elected to the Security Council. 
it was also india was also elected to the security council and who unicef and unesco all are different agencies of the un and india has been a member of these agencies also then many indian experts have worked for the united nations agencies many indians work for the united nation agencies specialized agencies of the un have given assistance to us in educational technical and scientific development so special agencies of the un given assistance to us in which are the field in educational field technical field and the scientific development field also at present india receives aid from the united nations programs presently india receives aid help from un now india is also equally eager to give help to other countries india give importance to giving help to other countries thus it gives as well as receives help and india give help and receive help also india gives as well as receives help so india actually supporting un now india is one of the founder member of the members of the united nations india and the united nations relation is very strong india is always supporting un un now so i hope that the chapter is clear all of you read this chapter four or five times and try to complete the exercise write the notes neatly and study it thank you